used to kind of a uh, actually, actually in the basement we you know we had these crazy ideas we wanted to revolu- revolutionize the industry we wanted to change how games were made right and we looked at like uh, the four track uh, tape recorder revolutionizing the music industry and digital video revolutionizing filmmaking right and we're like we can be the dv camera for the games industry that was like ah, that, that is the, the digital video camera that is the yeah like we we, we will we'll cool. change this industry that, that was like three guys in a basement kind of thinking hmm. we forgot about that for a while while just kind of you know had to struggle to actually build it yeah um got out there and and that's kind of what happened slowly but surely like you know we got these you know, kids that, that didn't have resources, didn't know how to make games. Otherwise, how did you get them? I'm just curious. I'm always fascinated oh, by. I just how made you a website. Ten we just customers. Made a we- just made a website. You made a website. Yeah, we, I mean, we didn't do any sales or marketing. Like we just like, you know, I mean, the product wasn't even good back then. It's really fantastic now, but it was kind of shitty. Um, uh, but there was something clear in our messaging. We were like, we were out there telling people like, you know, now you can make games, and mm. this is going to change the industry, and you should be part of that. Got it. And, uh, you know, a few kind of, you know, scrabbly How did kids. people do it before that? Did everybody have to make their own stage, their own rendering? Yeah, like, there was a lot of deep code that went into this before. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah no, that, that was actually the case. There was some there was some sort of stuff you could buy that wasn't so expensive, but it was kind of crappy. Mm-hmm. And we were the first, I would, no, we were the first kind of polished, elegant tool to do this. Absolutely. Right. Um, but then you meet the folks at Sequoia, and mm-hmm. you've got couple dozen people working for you. You've got some millions in revenue. Yeah, yeah, we did a few million that year. We, right. I mean, we were sort of a break-even growth business. What did, what did they see in the business that allowed them to invest in a company sure. that was thousands of miles away, yeah. run yeah. by a bunch of, you know, video Kids. game fans in Copenhagen? Yeah, yeah. Because that, at the time, by the way, mm-hmm. didn't happen. Companies no, in Europe generally didn't get the major VCs. True, but I, we had actually decided that I was going to move. So ah. we were three founders. I was the... I was, we were all technical, but I was the one that, that took the sort of business side of things and yep. became CEO. And so we decided collectively that I should move here and be close to the sort of ecosystem guys, the platform guys, the operating system guys, the device guys, um, and sort of build relationships. Sure. Um, and so we, I hadn't moved when I met Sequoia, but I was about to. Um, and they probably wouldn't have invested otherwise. Hmm. Uh, they've done a few investments outside of Silicon Valley completely, what, but what did really they, not many. What was their justification yeah. for the investment? So, How did they make that decision? Because it was a very speculative thing, and nobody knew sure. VR was going to come. Nobody knew mobile phones would sure. be using this. Pokemon Go and Augmented Rally, that was all very distant. True. What was the selling point? So there was a few things. Um, from I mean, we were just like three technical founders. They like that, you know. We built this product that was actually very elegant and polished. Mm. It wasn't perfect <laughs> by a long shot, but it, it did something nice. Um, they like that, all right. And and we were kind of scrappy. We built this company. We paid the salaries more or less on time, and it was sort of like a real thing. Um, our customers loved it, and they did a lot of. They, they called a lot of customers to check, and everyone came back saying like, "This is fantastic." Mm. Uh, not flawless, but fantastic. And, and, and there was some excitement that they felt. Now, the, the guys like that, you know, like Sequoia, I mean, they, they invest in sort of macro ideas besides these kind of, you know, personal direct product things. So, so, so the macro that they saw was like smartphones are happening. They met us just after the App Store had opened. Um, ah, so the App Store was a really so good the App Store, signal. Yeah, like we, the App Store opens in, <clears throat> in the summer of eight, right? And uh, we launched our version to support building games for the App Store a few months later. Um, and our growth started going even faster. That was the tipping point? Was it the App Store it, the tipping point? It was. We didn't under- understand it even at the time. And but, but Sequoia had this thesis, which they didn't even tell us. They were like, you know, they like... They like developer tools because, or they like a developer platform because it's enabling. Okay, if software is going to eat the world, sure, blah blah blah. Um, you know, the people doing the kind of creating of that are the developers, and a company that aligns with the developers to, you know, with the stated mission of of making developers successful, is in a good, interesting position. Then, you know, the other trend is smartphones and and you know that that those devices, and the third is is sort of uh, you know games industry is generally you know. Not always healthy, it's competitive and complicated, but a a big industry and growing fast. Hey everybody, I wanna tell you about a new product that is very cool and that I'm using. It's called Pearl Rear Vision. It is a solar powered wireless camera and alert system that installs on your car in minutes. Now you're like, hey, wait a second. Don't you have a Tesla Model X? Yes, I have one, humble brag. But my old Roadster, my old Tesla Roadster, my old Mercedes, they don't actually have a uh, rear camera. They don't have an alert system. I know it's crazy, but they should, but they don't. Well, Pearl's Rear Vision is a really cool product, and it's built by three co-founders who met at Apple, and they're super excited about autonomous vehicles. However, 
The underlying tech can't be used right now by a lot of these old cars, so we're going to need to improve the experience on the road today for everyone, including you and many people out there who don't have cars that have this technology. And boy, is it a game changer, obviously. So it's here's how it works, and this is the key. It's really, you can tell that these cats are super smart and that they worked at Apple. First of all, when you open it, like the unboxing experience is beautiful. It's a gorgeous product, but it's also wireless and it's solar powered and has dual HD cameras so it can see a day and night and it's theft resistant, the camera frame that you put around your license plate. Um, now you would secure it around your license plate and then it connects wirelessly to the car adapter uh, by the OBD port, OBD port. If you don't know what the OBD port is, you don't really need to worry about it. It's just under your dashboard. It's a little plug, you put a dongle in there, you're done. And there's no wiring, there's no drilling. You can do it yourself. You don't need to go like run power to the back. It's easy. And now the car adapter processes video streams to detect obstacles and you get audible alerts and visual alerts to the Pearl app on your phone. And you can change the app to be landscape or portrait. And when you're in a portrait mode, you can see two versions of the rearview mirror. One is like close up and one's a little bit wider. It's neat. And it comes with a phone mat. So hands-free viewing is uh, super easy. We love the product here. I'm putting it on all my cars that don't have this technology already. And I think these cats are going to do a bunch of interesting stuff doing new um, sophisticated stuff with these license plate technology. Uh, I won't tip their hand or promise you anything, but I could see a lot of interesting functionality coming out of this. It's definitely going to improve your driving experience. You're not going to back into anything. You see what's behind you. It's super important for safety because I have my bulldogs hanging out in the driveway. Uh, you know how it is. The pets get out. Everybody says, oh, shut the doors. And then somebody leaves it open. Now the pets are in the driveway and you got to worry about somebody hitting the pets with the car. Uh, so listen, it's essential that you have a product like this. Go to pearlauto.com slash twist pearlauto.com slash twist, P-E-A-R-L auto.com slash twist, and you'll get two-day free shipping. It's a great product. You're going to love it. Uh, totally go check it out. And thank you to Pearl Auto for joining the family here at This Week in Startups and supporting independent media. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. 